Luke chapter 14, we'll get there in just a little bit. I don't think I will finish today, but that's okay. I think I've asked the Lord to just let me say what I need to and be done. But I want to keep it pretty simple. It's Monday morning, I understand that. I do want to say this, uh, thank you to so many who've jumped in in the ministries. It's been just a pleasure to watch many of you jump in, and I know you're tired. I think I was talking to Pastor Armacost about this on Friday, and he says, you know, sometimes you, some, some churches will have like one week, a month of soul winning, or a big week of VBS, that type of thing, but it may be this is new for you in a sense of it's week in, week out, week in, week out, and sometimes that can just wear on you, but I, I just want to say thank you for jumping in, and then, and then there's been some, I think, that have tried to avoid um, a little bit of the effort. Let me encourage you to jump in. It's okay to be tired. It's a good tired. I was a little bit out of gas yesterday and last weekend I was a little bit out of gas, but you can go home at night and say, I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord. It's a wonderful thing. And so, uh, so, so just jump in. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people were tired last night, but that gym was hopping. So we, we'll figure out where to put our energies in. I saw the, the racquetball court. Wow, that had to be um, like fumigated after the uh, three-on-three soccer competition was going on last night. But, but we'll find the energy to do things. And, and I was thinking about it. You know, sometimes it's really hard for us to um, get motivated to do things that are spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it's, just, it's not hard for me to sit down and watch YouTube there's no, because there's no spiritual battle there. But it is, for some reason, challenging for us to read our Bible. It just is. Uh, I think two Mondays ago, when I was a little bit alive, I went up into the weight room and Tim was up there like, you know, flexing and such. I think we, we were talking about a little bit, um, you have to get motivated to do it, but there's not a spiritual battle to go up into the weight room. You could be up there an hour and a half lifting, but for some reason to pray for 30 minutes is a challenge. You will always find an excuse to not go soul winning because it's spiritual. And so understanding when you try to serve the Lord, the devil is always going to put something in your way to obstruct your service for the Lord. Just, just count on it. It's not going to go away. You're always going to have a battle when it comes to spiritual warfare. Uh, I, I'm just so blessed to be in the grind uh, in these houses on Saturdays and Sundays again. I, I feel like the Lord pushed me. The Lord said, you got a little lazy, and now you walk into these homes and you're, you're seeing... Our world's a mess. I think we know that, don't we? It's, it's, it's not a, a novelty like, wow, they cuss. Well, they do bad things. But I'll say it this way. The reason they cuss, the reason they do bad things is because they have just fallen in line with how they have been discipled. Their schools are discipling them. The television, smell of vision is discipling them. They're being urged in the gangs that they're a part of, this is what you do, and they've just said we're going to be discipled and we're going to follow the path of our teachers. So don't be surprised when the world is violent because the Bible makes it clear the devil was a murderer. They just are falling in line with their father. When they're angry... Mr. Haiti was telling me a little bit about a guy that's just angry. He wants to take his life. It's not a weird thing because the devil is an angry person. He hates. He despises. Uh, you see, the sports world, they're just nuts about sports. You watch a crowd go crazy. And if they would just watch themselves, they'd probably say, oh, that looks a little foolish. But, but, but these soccer stars and these baseball stars and, and how the following is, and people will dress like them and they will act like them because they're just following the person that they love. Stay with me. Because I'm going somewhere with this. How many consider yourselves an outdoorsman? Oh, my hand is down very quickly. All right, Levi, I thought for sure he was going to have his hand raised. All right, all right, so... so when I'm going to rough it, <laughs> uh, it's not going to happen. But if, if I'm going to, um, 
you know, you guys that say I'm an outdoorsman, you, you, you might change your tune depending on what the outdoors significance is at, at that particular time, if you will. But when I go, um, there are certain things that have to be involved. AC, that's air condition. I'm not, a, I'm not roughing it unless it's air condition. An RV where I'm inside, away from the elements, and we'll just throw ele elephants, elements, <laughs> that too. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I don't mind having a TV out there, all right? So watch some highlights along the way. That's my roughing it, all right? But, but, but listen to this. These are people at a wilderness area. And, uh, they, you know, you can give comment cards at parks and stuff. You stick them in a box. These were things for people that said we're going to go rough it. These were some of their comments. Trails need to be reconstructed. Please avoid building trails that go uphill. <laughs> Here's one. And th this is for real. This is not just me thinking these up. We'll go ahead and let him speak to God after God's called him there. Too many bugs and leeches and spiders and spider webs. Please spray the wilderness to rid the areas of these pests. <laughs> this was good. I thought this was good. Please pave the trails. Chair lifts need to be in some places so that we can get to wonderful views without having to hike to them. This was good. The coyotes made too much noise last night and kept me awake. Please eradicate these annoying animals. <laughs> A small deer came into my camp and stole my jar of pickles. Is there a way I can get reimbursed? <laughs> Escalators would help on steep hill up, uh, sections, uphill sections. Too many rocks in the mountains. This was my favorite probably. A McDonald's would be nice at the trailhead. <laughs> so these are people that have said, I'm stepping out. I'm going to rough it. I'm going to be an adventuresome. Just call me Daniel Boone. But when they step into the world and realize life is not what they really thought it was going to be, we're going to complain about this. And I thought, you know what? That is so true for me as a Christian. If it's not comfortable, I'm out. If those kids aren't going to listen, let's leave them at home. So it's easy for, for me to call myself a disciple of Jesus Christ until it gets difficult. And let me just say it this way, because I've got a group in here, I think that loves the Lord and that would call themselves Christians and that would sing the song, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. But I'm just going to tell you plainly, you're going to face some difficulties. And are we going to be the type of people that are like these wilderness folks that say, well, I want to go rough it, but I didn't expect it to be so tough. John 6, don't turn there, but verse 66, Jesus, the Bible says this. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. I have this hunch because right after the, right before this was the feeding of the 5,000. If you can't get excited about the feeding of the 5,000, something's wrong with you. We had 670-ish on the bus, buses yesterday. Amen. And we're going to go to the houses on Saturday or Thursday this week, and they're going to say something like this. What's going on at church on Sunday? And we're going to say something like this. Church? And they're like, oh. And I hate to say it, but it could be, it's likely that half of what came Sunday won't come back next Sunday. I was saying that on my bus. I'm like, you know what? It's going to be tough now next week because we're not doing skate day and we're not doing these activities. And one kid without even being proud, he's like, I ain't coming. <laughs> like, oh, that's encouraging. I thought I was exciting. <laughs> but, but isn't that kind of the way that we live? If it's not fun, we're not all in. And there's an element of even like, ah, oh, let's go set up for this because there's 33 people, but there's going to come a time where many people will walk away. And even in this text, we'll find it won't be long before one of Jesus' own, as he's talking to the 12, one of his own will walk away because it wasn't what he expected. 
So when you lead somebody to Christ, we put them on this path, if you will. We call it discipleship. We tell them, read your Bible and pray and join the church. And praise the Lord, we have a couple of our teenagers hopefully going to join the church this week. And it's exciting. And they get on this path and you say, you got to do this and you need to do this. Now, now watch me. It's really hard for us to disciple people if we're not disciples ourselves. And, and so if we're just kind of half-hearted in this Christian life, what we're going to produce is half-hearted Christians as well. And we don't need more half-hearted people. Our desire with Fairhaven Christian Academy and Fairhaven Baptist Church and Fairhaven Baptist College is not to produce more average or mediocre people. We need some people all in. Man, I hope you're all in. I don't know your day-to-day -day routine, but I tell you what, if you can't read your Bible and pray, you're not all in. That's right. And if telling somebody about Jesus is a drudge to you, you're not all in. We need some guys, we need some young ladies that are all in. We don't, our junior church classes don't need us to go and sit in the back corner and do this. Our junior church classes need us to be sitting with that kid because he may not be back ever again. And he's going to remember that worker, that person. They, they put a little tension on me. They put a little time on me. And, and I'm going to remember that. That's what our people need. Are you all in? Someone said it this way, and I've never forgotten it. It, it rings in my mind quite often. They said this. Half-heartedness is trying to serve God in such a way that you don't offend the devil. It's kind of what Pastor Mitchell was talking about last night. Are you willing to stand out? Well, no, I'm just, as long as I'm kind of in the mix, I'm good. We, we can't afford to be half-hearted in this Christian life where the, the Lord's looking for disciples. That's the word. Tom Landry, if you, don't, if you know football, he was an old coach back in the day. He said this, the job of a football coach is to make men do what they don't want to do in order to achieve what they've always wanted to be. Our job in our training process is not to make CJ feel good. Like, oh, I, I, I know you, 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 know, you haven't read your Bible for five days this week, and I know you missed your minute. I don't know if he did this. I'm just, you're okay. You're not okay. You're not taking this personal. And I know you haven't done this. It, it, it's going to be okay. Know what has to happen. Say, so we got to push you. we got to correct you. We've got to say, if you want to be a disciple of Christ, there's some things you just have to do. Jesus didn't just let things go. He corrected. He says, you guys have, he didn't say they had no faith. He said, you have a little bit of faith. Grow in our faith. And he pushed his disciples to do more. That's what discipleship is all about. It seems like our text, we'll look at Luke chapter 14. It's almost as if, Jesus is discouraging people from following him. 1425. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and here we go, hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, Yea, in his own life also, here's the phrase, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether you have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and wasn't able to finish or what king, going to make war against another, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an amassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, cannot be my disciple. It's almost like he's discouraging. He's got this big crowd. He knows what's coming. And he's saying this, if you don't do these things, if you don't have this in your life, you cannot be my disciple. And I think, again, I'm talking to a crowd that says, I want to follow Jesus. I want to live for Jesus. So if you're going to follow Jesus, this is what it's going to take. Well, I want to be a disciple. 
until you hear Matthew suffered martyrdom while being slain with a sword. Mark was cruelly dragged through the streets of the city. Luke was hanged on an olive tree. John was boiled in hot oil. Peter, Peter was crucified upside down. James was beheaded. James the less was thrown from a lofty pinnacle of the temple and then beaten to death with a fuller's club. Bartholomew, get this, was flayed alive. He was skinned alive. Yeah! Andrew was bound to a cross where he preached to his persecutors until he died. Thomas was run through the body with a lance. Jude was shot to death with arrows. Matthias was first stoned and then beheaded. Barnabas was stoned. Paul, we know, he was beheaded. And I remember as a kid, we'd watch these movies on the Christmas Eve service, and it would be movies about John Huss. And I think it was counterproductive for guys like me because it says, hey, if you're going to serve the Lord, you might get burned at the stake. And I'm thinking, I'm out. Or you watch these things like Tortured for His Faith, Richard Wormbrand, who was not afraid to preach the gospel, and they beat him. And I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, I want to follow Jesus, but I'm not sure if the route, that's the route I want to take. Are you with me? Because what happens is our discipleship is going to stop somewhere. And we love to preach about Peter, don't we? But the Bible says all the disciples forsook him and fled. And all of them said the very same thing, that we will stand for you, Jesus. But it's going to stop somewhere. Where is it going to stop for you? But I'm tired. I mean, my bus captain had me out for four and a half hours on Saturday, and it was hot. And then he asked me to fork out $12 for donuts. Is our weariness going to stop us? And it does many. Is the expense of things going to stop us? I mean, I, I, I'm blown away at what people will buy, how much they'll pay for tickets for sporting events. I was looking at a college activity. I'm going I'm to pick, pick an activity to go to a game, a sporting event, and I was looking at soccer. I thought, hey, soccer would be fun. And I hit the game where... What's his name? Messi from wherever he's playing now. I hit it and I thought, Chicago's playing. I think it was Miami. I think his name. And, and the tickets were 20 and 25. And then that game, it was like two or three hundred dollars for one ticket to watch a soccer game. But it was sold out. We could have went. Your college activity fee would have been just scarfed up in one activity. But people, they're not balking about it. They're going to go. You know why? Because they're willing to follow Lionel Messi. And I've been just thrilled when I've just heard the spirit right now. Is, hey, can you help with this? Mr. Amos, I'll be there. Amen. But just let me remind you, it's the grind. It doesn't go away. If you're going to serve the Lord, you just have to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. I was thinking about this. Pastor Mitchell preaches twice yesterday, but guess what he has to do? I don't know if he's preaching Thursday, but you just, it, it just never goes away. You just got to keep preaching. You got to keep preparing. And then as a bus captain, welcome to my, our world now. You just got to keep going out. There's really not a break. And you just got to keep going. And those kids aren't going to be waiting at the door on Sunday mornings next Sunday, just waiting with their bags for a candy drop. We're going to have to beat on the door and like, oh, we're not coming. And there's going to be frustration and there's going to be discouragement and there's going to be disappointment. But if we're disciples of Jesus, we just have to keep on going. That's what discipleship is all about. So if you're going to follow Christ, you need to have, number one, a single mind in our service. A single mind. Verse number 33, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all, not all, not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Single mind. You have to have a focus. Now, how foolish would it be? Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. But we have to have a single mind, a single focus. It says in verse 26, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife, and I think we understand it's not the idea of despising them, but our love for him must be primary so it looks to everyone else that I don't love them because I love God more. If we're trying to serve and please everybody else, we're never going to have a clear focus. It has to be God first, God first, God first, God first. It's got to be a single focus. 
And that's so important for us if we're going to follow God in this area of discipleship. I've seen, in about 25 years of ministry now, I've seen a lot of people sit where you are. And they've come and I've read their bi biographies and they say, God's called me to preach. God's called me to Christian school work. God's called me to do this. I'm not picking on them, but I see what happens as they start to work and as they start to get some money and they start to have other things begin to kind of take over and it kind of chokes out that desire for serving the Lord. And as we heard last night, we are all privy to love the world. We are all privy to love the world. That's why, Benjamin, that's why it says love not the world. Because if it wasn't commanded, it probably would be not a natural thing. But it is commanded for us to love not the world because I like the world. But it's also commanded to love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind seven times in the Scriptures because it is not, a na it's not natural. I love myself. So you have to have a single mind and say, I'm going to love God with all my heart, all my soul, forsake everything that I have because it's all about Him. Number two, following God calls for a Sure service. You say, what do you mean by that? Look at verse 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come, next two words say, after me, cannot be my disciple. All right, the idea is you better know who it is that you're serving. You better know who it is that you're serving. You better, if, if I came like, eh, I don't remember who my wife is. I don't know who my kids are, and I'm going through this life, and I'm just not aware of what's going on. Uh, when I was in college, I was trying to play basketball, and I was on a, 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 on a team, on the team we were playing Concordia over in Fort Wayne. And uh, I remember we were, we were in the game, and towards the end, something happened, and I, I, I was diving for the ball or something, and I hit somebody's head, and I just remember being knocked out. Next thing I know, from Concordia, I was in a minivan with Pastor Dammer and Pastor Armacost driving me to the Michigan City Hospital. I don't remember any of this that happened. And so I was in the hospital for a day or two, and they brought me up, Life, of, Life and Times of Jesus the Messiah by Alfred Edersheim to read while I was concussed, <laughs> and they were making fun of me. But I remember my brother, my wife and I were dating at the time, and my, my brother told my wife, Eric has no idea who you are which might have been good for her. I don't know. And she was a bit nervous because, I don't know, I think at that time we had dated a year or two, and he's like, he doesn't even know who you are. <laughs> now, it, it sounds kind of foolish, but, but if, you know, if I came back and I didn't know who she was and who I was supposed to be dating, that could be a little bit of a problem. <laughs> now, now, foolish example, but here's the point. If you go through life and you don't know who you're serving, you don't know who you're serving, you're going to struggle staying on track. You better know who it is that you serve. He says this, you need to come after me. I don't have time to read John chapter 21, the entire text. Pastor Malinak preached about it. But Jesus approaches Peter and says, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Then he says in response, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. And he goes on to say, do you love me? Do you, notice what he didn't say, do you love your family? He didn't say that. He didn't say, do you love souls? He said, and, and those things we should love, amen? But he says, I want to make it clear, before you start serving, if you're going to be my disciple, you better know who it is that you serve. You better know the Lord. Follow him. Don't follow an institution. You're not leaving and say, I'm doing this because Fairhaven doesn't know. You need to get in your heart, down deep in your heart, say, I'm doing this because of him. And when you get that, life is going to be so much easier. Stop trying to please the faculty. Stop trying to just please your parents. Stop just, just focus on pleasing him. And I promise you, you will please the people that truly matter in this life. But our eyes get focused off of him and they get focused on her or focused on this person or even get focused on our parents. And I'm all for loving my parents. I want to please my dad. My dad turned 78 last week. And you know what? I just want to please my dad. But, but 
If it interferes with God, God's first. God's first. Because I know who it is that I'm supposed to serve. Know who you're going to serve. And let me remind you, you're going to face pressure. We were talking about pressure a couple days ago at home. If you squash a skunk, it's not going to smell pretty. Right? Because you're go it's going to be revealed what is inside the skunk. If I squeeze an orange, orange juice is going to come out because that's what's inside. Stay with me. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is, thy strength is small. And some of us are like, oh, I'm going to serve the Lord. And all of a sudden, a little skirt walks by and says, like, ah. Or a little device gets in our way. Or a friend can pull us off track. Or a little weariness like, man, I just can't read my Bible. Today. I, don't, I don't know what it is. We're all prone to these things. But our discipleship is going to stop somewhere with just a little bit of pressure. You better know who it is that you serve. And I'll end with this. You better know why you serve. Why do you do what you do? I don't know. Why do you have a Bible? Why do you go to church three or four times a week? Why do we knock on doors? Now watch me. When you have a cause, you will set the course. When you have a cause for something, you will set the course. Why do Muslims blow themselves up? That's not something that I'm hoping to do today. I got two backpacks in my office. <laughs> I'm just going to go blow up somebody because I just have a cause. Karis was, she's reading some books on Muslims right now. The Kriegos gave her some books about Muslims. So she's reading them. And she said, Dad, when people get saved out of the Muslim religion, their family members will kill them. And, and she was kind of telling me some stories that she's reading right now. I'm sitting there. I'm thankful that we have a religion that our leader gave his life for us. Amen. Amen. And I was just sitting there thinking about it. She's like, and, and, and it's completely opposite. They have to go blow them. But they, they believe in it. I'm just going to say it this way. A whole lot more than I do, I think, sometimes. Shame on me. Because they have a cause. And their cause is false. We have a cause. We have truth. We have a person that we can look to and say, He died for me. The least I can do is just follow Him. But you better know who it is you serve. And you better know why you're serving. And you better have that focus. And that's why every morning you got to get up and set the course for your day. And get in the book and find out rather than God, what are you going to do for me today? How about ask him, God, what can I do for you? Set a cause. Set a course. And say, let's go. And along the way, hey, Daniel, God's working in my heart. Hey, let's do this together. Let's pray together. Let's serve together. Let's witness together. And it's a whole lot more fun when it's not more not just one and two and three and five and that gets really exciting but you got to be committed <laughs> the last one I'm not going to go develop it but you better be steadfast because a lot of people start but very few finish you might have heard this but one of my favorite animals is a cheetah they are awesome to watch run out on the on the on the in the in the in the wild. I love watching their 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 bodies, the sleekness of them, and the speed. These cats can sprint seventy miles an hour. The problem is they can't sustain that pace for very long. Inside of their body is a disproportionately small heart, which causes the cheetah to tire quickly. Unless the cheetah catches its prey in the first flurry, it must abandon the chase. Sometimes I think we do that. Let's go! 
all. Let's serve the Lord. Oh, man, I'm ready to preach. Three days later. It hinges on your heart. Your heart. And I think we have a willing group here. Amen. Revival meetings come along. Youth conference comes along. And we hit the altar. Tears are flowing down our face. I just want to get right with God. And two weeks later, we're right back doing the same nonsense. And I'm throwing myself in the mix, too that we were doing and we wanted to get away from. Part of it is just because our heart's pretty small. Our commitment is pretty little. Do you really want to be a disciple of Jesus? Or are you like me when I was a kid watching John Huss burn in flames? I still know the song that he was singing at the stake. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> they, they want me to surrender my life to full-time service? <laughs> that's, that's really how it was. And sometimes I stop and think, at 47, oh man, I'm tired. I don't know if I can do any more. It hinges on my heart. And sometimes I get my eyes off of him, start looking around at everybody else, and it's easy, watch me, it's easy to get real discouraged when you get your eyes off him. Yep. Real discouraged. I've been there too many times in the last couple of years, and it's not fun to be there. It's horrible to be there. But if I can, Joe, just train my eyes toward looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Father. Listen, it's easier when you have that goal in mind. I'm looking to him. Let him be the focus. You're following him, not Mr. Ramos. I'm blessed to work with Tyler and Bus and Junior Church. He may not be so blessed. But keep your eyes not on me, but on him. It'll take you a whole lot further. So what it takes to be a disciple. Is that what you really want? Or is it just a nice chorus? I have decided to follow Jesus. Up to what point? Up to what point? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. I believe I obeyed you with the message for this morning and maybe there's one or two that needed encouraged by this as was prayed by Sam this morning let our hearts be challenged or encouraged what is going to keep you from being a disciple of Jesus Christ 